Cool. There we go. Sorry that the slides look wonky. This is Open Office, and for some reason, Open Office doesn't properly support the word standards. Uh, this should say my Twitter handle and Cryptium Labs. Uh, anyway, so today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about technical governance for decentralized networks. Um, I have many slides. I will skip most of them, um, but I will come back down to business models on like how validation may make money in the future. As a quick introduction to myself, I'm Adrian. I'm one of the founders of Cryptium Labs. We are a team of protocol engineers that also happens to run uh, large-scale validator operations on very few select networks. Um, and so sort of the main reason why we do run them is because it gives us a very interesting avenue in exploring how these networks work and figuring out sort of what works on protocol level and what doesn't. And then we really try to help the networks that we actually run evolve its protocol over time. And five minutes is really short. So why do networks have governance? Very quick story. Then like we're launching early research prototypes. All the mainnets, like mainnets, are really just functional prototypes that need to fundamentally change over the next two to three years before they're actually useful for anyone in the world to use. Uh, what problems will governance tackle? Mostly how do you quickly upgrade a system? Uh, and how do you well, how do you first of all decide what to do and then so sort of deciding on which way to go and then afterwards deciding on which specific implementation of the way to go you actually want to adopt and doing so without, re uh, without relying on Twitter fights over who has the most followers and who can claim that they have community consensus behind them and that everyone supports my opinion, um, which can literally be like three people on Reddit or Twitter. Um, <laughs> It's like, I'm not pointing fingers here, but Ethereum governance works like this. Uh, it's a, bit, a little bit ridiculous. Um, so that's really the main problem that governance is tackling here. Uh, and the role of validators network and network stewards. The thing is, so far, a lot of proof of stake validators have voted in governance, but I feel like they're mostly making default choices where very few validators will actually actively contribute to protocol upgrades, for example, or even verify and read the code of the proposed protocol upgrades. And I think this will have to change over time because, or we will have to outsource this to someone else. Maybe we see different business models revolve around validation where um, like the voting power goes to someone else whose only job it is to validate what the networks are doing and what the code does and what the up sort of the long-term impacts of these upgrades. And the other job is to run secure infrastructure, yet to be seen. But in most certainly right now, val you should delegate to validators that care about the technical evolution of these networks, because that's really where most of the value of the underlying staking assets will come from. Like they're not going to be magically more valuable um, unless we happen to hit another ICO run. Um, outside of this, we will actually have to figure out real world use cases and solve those. Um, and for that, we need some amount of direction and validators are very well positioned to be the gui uh, gu um, guardians, yeah, to give guidance there. Okay, one and a half minutes. Challenges ahead. I'm going to skip that one. Business models. So validation. Um, this is sort of business models for validators and the different ones that become apparent right now. Uh, so at the bottom layer, we have secure infrastructure. And every validator has to do this right now. Some do this better than others. And mostly in the market today, people, validators try to differentiate themselves as running the most secure infrastructure or running the most available infrastructure. But very likely in the future, this is going to be a given. Like no one will delegate to a validator that has security risk or that has liveness risk. And the thing is, the technical setup for secure infrastructure is a solved problem. It's like, we know how to run secure HSMs at large scales. We mostly don't have the DevOps people in the space yet, but in the next sort of one to two years, the problem on how do you run a secure validator will mostly be solved. Like a bunch of uh, Google SIEs will come over and will solve this for us and we will have a bunch of scripts and a bunch of um, sort of like Terraform files that handle most of this. There's still the problem on understanding the protocols and sort of understanding the failure cases for these protocols for the specific protocols, but that will require a lot more technical knowledge than just running secure infrastructure. So given that this will sort of be the base layer that everyone has to fulfill, what are the different things people can build on top of this? 
So one really big worry for everyone was that, oh, everyone will just start delegating to exchanges because they can make your assets tradable. And yes, that's a really valu a valuable like, model that they can offer. So they can offer centralized staking derivatives and make your assets liquid, even though they still keep earning rewards. Um, and this would be super useful. And I think most people are afraid of this. Like most of the validators that try to run the most secure infrastructure are afraid of this because they know that these exchanges are offering better business models. Yes, one minute, sorry. Um, two, decentralized staking. Right now, Chorus One is building staking derivatives for Cosmos. Um, this will allow all of us as validators to start offering the same staking derivatives. Three, governance stewards, so analyzing protocol upgrades and seeing what happens and sort of determining the long-term future. Four, protocol developers. I think more validators should actually work on the protocol. Um, five, investor validators, right, like validate for polychain. And six, many other possible business models. I don't know yet. And everyone here in this room as a validator should innovate around this. Uh, so now as to why Cryptium Labs is one of the most secure validators, I recently found out that our infrastructure is classified as critical infrastructure for Switzerland since we sit on a fiber exchange point that is used by the Swiss banks. And due to that, the Swiss military has yearly exercises in defending the data center. Um, so <laughs> in like that building, um, our, our service, and the Swiss military is practicing defending this. And the funny thing is they sent me an email saying like, don't worry if there are tanks around, this is an exercise and they'll be gone next week. Um, yes, cool, uh, that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>